In fact, I I I, I am told uh, I don't know the details, but I'm told that uh, the UNESCO, you know, the United Nations for Education, Social, Cultural, something organization, right? Yeah. So they have accorded heritage status to uh, the Vedic chants, the process of oral uh, transmission of Vedic chants, like the uh, Samveda, Yajurveda, etc. Because these chants have remained unchanged for 1,000 years or more, according to them. Actually, we know that it's much longer. Yeah. Even from the empirical point of view, they say it is 1,000 years. But even that is enormously long. So, you know, to, to continue the fidelity of transmission uh, without changing a single syllable or a single intonation for 1,000 years without a piece of paper, without any recording system, except in the brain, that was something quite uh, astonishing. Yes, I have. Uh, I also read about this, that the, the precision of that replication is, is amazing. In one sense, it stays in the memory of people and they, they're very systematically trained to pronounce everything very precisely. So, yes, yes. So with respect to this, I had read about something which is a slight difference between Shruti and Smriti, that this preservation of the sound vibrations was especially done for the Shrutis, for the Rig Veda and other such Vedic literature primarily. And the Smritis, because they were recollections, there is of course a tradition of say memorizing Ramayana, not so much the Sanskrit Ramayana, but as more of the local renditions of the Ramayana, vernacular ones, and reciting. But that is more in terms of musical recitation. Uh, but uh, the Shruti seem to, oh, because there is a greater level of unchangeability associated with them. So the, the sound of Shrutis is considered to be, uh, we could say, more essential to preserve. Is there any similar differentiation that is there within our tradition? I know Jiva Goswami says that uh, for us, the Bhagavatam is also like a Shruti. But uh, broadly speaking, it seems Smriti seems to be a little more uh, uh, malleable in its manifestation. So what, what I had heard was that in Smriti, the meaning is more important than the letter. The, so sometimes there, that's why in say Chakravarti Padana's commentary says in some versions this verse is like this, in some versions this verse is like this. But overall the meaning remains the same. Um, from what I understand, uh, the difference between Shruti and Smriti, uh, apart from the uh, immediately superficial and correct understanding that one is Shruti is that which is heard and Smriti is that which is remembered after having been heard. Uh, you're correct when you say that um, the Shrutis were more, or rather the Puranas and the, and the uh, Smritis were more malleable. Uh, in what sense? Uh, essentially, the Shrutis, like the four Vedas, and to, to a large degree, the Upanishads also, were... Um, structured in a certain type of, composed in a certain type of language, uh, which was the older type of Sanskrit, uh, which placed a lot of emphasis on swara, which is the intonation, you know, uh, the pronunciation, the intonation. You know, one of the six Vedangas is Shiksha, right? Shiksha means phonetics. Uh, Jyotisha is, uh, you know, astrology and then Nirukti is etymology and Vyakaran is grammar, etc. So, um, in this way, the Shiksha uh, was phonetics about how to pronounce the things exactly. So, there is a lot of rigidity in the Shrutis about this, especially the four Vedas. Uh, so, you have to pronounce things in a certain way. You have to uh, 
chant things in a certain way you know so um, uh, for example there is uh, uh, akshara shuddhi you know hmm uh, akshara shuddhi uh, means that you have to pronounce the words uh, you know correctly uh, so you can't pronounce them wrongly uh, then, then the whole thing changes uh the second would be um uh, matra shuddhi matra is the the uh, duration for which you hold the vowels you know like, like there's a short vowel the long vowel right so if you change the uh, emphasis if you if you say it for a slightly longer period it's a long vowel right so yeah. in, in the it, when when we pronounce it in the modern day age Uh, not only do we make mistakes in uh, akshara akshara ashuddhi there is we don't pronounce properly the different uh, alphabets but we also don't have mantra uh, matra shuddhi so for example you know uh, we may say lord narayan yes it's lord narayan okay 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 right? yeah or uh one thing i used to commonly hear devotees saying is bhakti churu swami whereas it is bhakti charu swami right okay so the matras or the the length of the vowels the duration for which you hold is is very important and the third is the swara shuddhi swara is the intonation the pitch and and how you you know uh recite it and how you place emphasis on certain things so uh regarding this um, um akshara shuddhi matra shuddhi swara shuddhi a lot of emphasis is given in the uh, shruti so you have to pronounce things uh, exactly like that you have to intonate intone the the verses exactly like that the duration of holding the chants have to be also exactly like that and if you don't do that then the the mantra the power of the mantra is lost right we, we hear so many times shila prabhupad saying that we don't have brahmanas like they used to early because they can't chant the mantras like that and therefore the mantras you know they don't work like that anymore because we don't have all these three factors 